and the Lord shall speak to us powerfully, touch our lives, transform our mindset, that we are designed to fulfill the purpose of God in our generation. I want to tell the church and the whole world that God has never been surprised by anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. He knows everything. He knows that we are in the midst of a pandemic. He is not surprised by anything. And so God had planned and designed the place of the righteous and the faithful, even in the pandemic time. Am I going to make it? And it has been known from history and from the spiritual revelation that anytime the world is going through hard time, the church multiplies. That's a secret from the word of God. And so I rejoice because the church is doing well in this dispensation. What we need to learn and understand is to master the times and season. And so I want to invite us to lesson number three on our great title, Understanding. Understanding what? Or discerning. Discerning seasons and what? And time. And thank you for those who are giving us feedback and telling us that is the right message for this season and for this time. We want to bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. We have done a lot of study in this area. And I want to bring this revelation into a close. So that we can learn something else. I want to talk about the Issachar generation. The Issachar. Issachar generation. Issachar generation had unique abilities in the word of God. Bible says the members of this generation at the age of 20 years all of them can go for war or battle. For this sense, these men were trained men of war. They were mighty men of Fela. The Issaka generation. They see Fela said. They had unique ability to wage war. Praise the living God. God had preserved these people. To fulfill a divine purpose in their lives. Want to say something? The Issachar generation. This was a small subtribe of Israel. Number two is what you are going to read from the scripture. Number two is what you are going to read from the scripture. In the first chronicles, chapter number 12, line number 32. The book of First Chronicles, chapter number 12, line number 32. I want to teach on this powerful thing. So that we can understand. First Chronicles, chapter number, chapter number 12, line number 32. It should be to be a very short kind of a message for us today. Thank you, Jesus. Are you in, the, in Chronicles chapter 12 and number 32? Thank you, Jesus. We are there. The Bible says something amazing about the Issachar generation. The Bible says in verse number 32, And the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of times, to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs 
were 200 and their brethren were at their command. Let's listen to King James Version. And the sons of Issachar who had understanding of time. Amplified version. And the sons of Issachar who had understanding of times to know what Israel hoped what to do. To know what Israel hoped what to do. The word Issachar means reward. Not Isaac. Issachar means reward. It means compensation, benefit, or salary. Issachar generation lived a life Life, a life of reward. In other words, their life spent was spent rewarding others. This kind of life is called lifeless. And there is someone to build my message. The impact of the season and time. Present believing God. Issachar generation lived their lives not to benefit themselves. It was a life to reward others. When Jesus raised the 12 disciples, he simply told them, your life shall no longer become yours. You will spend the entire life giving the gospel to the nations. What was those, what was the message behind this kind of revelation? God, Jesus taught them the Isaka principle. Anybody in the Bible who impacted life, come on, they spend their lives not working on themselves, but they spend their lives rewarding others. Moses had an opportunity to become number two or number three, either prime minister or something in the house of Pharaoh. But what God did to him was amazing. He took Moses outside the palace where he would build his life, probably marry the most beautiful wife. Because he was a prince in Egypt. And the Lord told him, Your life shall be drawn out of water. It's called the Peter's principle. What's Peter's principle? To fish out of sin and bring life to men. Because Peter had spent time fishing fish out of water. It's called Peter's principle. To draw out is Peter's principle. But Peter's principle did not begin for Peter. It began for Moses. Because Moses simply means to draw out of water. Am I speaking to people in this church right now? Yes. Present the living God? Amen. It's true. And so the Bible says, and the children of Israel were baptized into Moses. Moses never left the water in his life. Moses was a man after two things, water and mountain. Anytime God wants to speak to Moses, he tells God, wait a minute, let's meet in the mountain. But anytime the life of Moses wants to have a turn around and have a significance, he has to come to the point of waters. When Moses came to the Red Sea, something happened. The Lord had to draw him out of the water. Amen. But you cannot be drawn out of the water if you are not 
in the water. That the Lord God made sure that Moses was in the water, but when he was got out of the water, he was a savior of Israel. Amen. Because he told Israel, the Egyptians you are seeing today, you will see them no more after he came out of the water. Oh, you're not getting what I'm saying. Amen. Am I too deep for this? Else? President of the living God. Amen. And so from the time Moses came out of the Red Sea, Moses never lived his life. He lived the Isaac principle. I'm going to answer a very nice question. Let's continue. Jesus stayed for three, three years. And I, and I remember telling you something amazing. That Jesus lived to for how many years? 33 years. But 30 years, nobody knows. It was his own personal life. Three years is what we know because Jesus spent active ministry doing what? Teaching, healing, and preaching. And his ministry is being spoken out to today. And we did our nice mathematics and discovered that it's around how many years? 3,000 months? Yes. What is the connection between 3 and 3,000 years? It is the principle of one ratio to 1,000. For those who are doing CRE, please, this is mathematics. <laughs> And this is the principle of God that says a day of Issachar life, releasing your life to people, shall leave an impact of a thousand years. Yes. What is your belief? Issachar principle. A day in God. What is a day in God? Principle of Jesus. And I am here, I'm a pata. I'm a okona ishaaki. I'm a potesa. But an I potesa kwa jiliyangu. I'm a pata. It is a day in God. A day in God is the day of labor. Where you take your life and you pour into the ministry. The impact will be multiplied by a thousand. This is spiritual mathematics. A day in God is like a thousand years. And for those who have forgotten, let me give you the mathematics. See this the foundation of the earth. When the earth was laid to the time of Jesus. To the time of Jesus, this is the earth. The earth foundation. We know that it was approximately how many years? Two thousand years. We know that one. For those who have forgotten, President believe in God. But we know this world was built in how many days? Six days, which means I want to mathematics. How many? Six thousand years. I'm not. I'm not prophesying. I'm just teaching simple mathematics. Are we together? So, from the time of the earth was made to the time of Jesus, how many years have been have been used? Two thousand. From the days of Jesus to our days, our days, our days. Is how many years? Two thousand what? Years. But we are not living in the 4,000 year, we are actually in the 50,000 year. So it's actually, we are living, living this plus this, we are living with, in the 50,000 year because the whole years is how many? 6,000 years. Yeah. So between 2,000 of Jesus to where we are right now because we are in the 5,000, how many thousand years have gone? 3,000 years. And up to now, we are still preaching about Jesus. From the time Jesus was there to now, 3,000 years, we are still speaking about him. Amen. Because Jesus said, I have nowhere to lay my head. What was Jesus saying? I am living an Issachar prison. Amen. Amen. Do you know why Kenya is so corrupt? It's because Muta Nipata, Elvo Miyamoja, and Afkiriya Bibiaga na Watoto, Kwanza. But that are community and that is my An MP at the part of CDF and I've given you a job as a new buyer. 
But that they are one of God that is present in the in the in the, in the constituency. And so the more we are focusing on our life, the less rewarding we become. And the more the terrible becomes our associations. And we make a terrible world in our compound. Two sons with the same father. None of them had the heart of the father. One of them took the wife and went away. But the one that remained was terrible than the one who went. Let's get to the member Alisema. Alisema, Daddy, after we can depart here, come on a condo, we change the baby, the man better fix it up. He doesn't have the heart of the father. Because the heart of the father says, I don't want to live my life. I want to transform my life into my sons. The Isaka. Please. of God. Until the Holy Father says, there is a special tribe in our community that has nothing to do with themselves. It is all to do with us. And they name them the Isaac generation. I reward you. Amen. And you ask me, Pastor, what is the secret of these guys? What is the secret? And the secret is what we have been given. The end ability. <laughs> They had the ability to design uh, times and what? Seasons. That is the only secret. That's the only secret. Peter said, wait a minute. 
I have never seen a man of this kind. And he went back to the feet of Jesus. And Jesus told him, now you go to prison. You're not going to do this again. Let's go to the field and fish man. Yeah. And from now on, for Peter, you are not tied to nets. You are tied to life. Yeah, and when you are tied to life, you are lifeless. You are rewarding people. And when you are rewarding people, you are not living. You are an Isaac. Tie over human being. Amen. You go to the government today, nobody looks like an Isaac. Even not the government, even in families, husbands are terrorizers. Mothers are terrorizers. And so what happens? The moment we neglect the Isaka principle, look at my eyes, times and season becomes irrelevant. Glory to God. Am I communicating right now? Yes. Very important. Time and system becomes important. That's what the man who trained me for ministry told me. Anytime God has assigned you to bring the gospel, you stop looking after yourself. There are three principles that govern evangelism. There are three principles that govern evangelism. And I'm not teaching about this. I'm just mentioning them. Are we together? There Three principles. Principle number one. Carry everything but nothing. Carry everything but nothing. Carry all the blessings, all the good news, everything. But don't put anything on your back. Because the houses that welcomes you, the moment you release everything for them, they are responsible to take care of you. Principle number two. Principle number two. Hey, when you get this, principle number two. The danger. Of omission before commission. The danger of omission before commission. Make sure when we are sending you, commissioning you, you are well trained for the work. Never omit anything. Go through the whole process. Then we commission you. Principle number three. The message. The message should, and you should underline the word should, be greater. The message should be greater than the messenger. The message should be greater than the messenger.
chapter 2, line number 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, line number 2. Paul is instructing Timothy on four important principles. And I'll talk about the significance of Isaiah principle. He said the words I received. The words I received from God. 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 Give them faith. Give them to faithful men. Glory be that. And let faithful men transfer to others. So that we can have full dissemination of revelation. From God to Paul is mystery. Mystery. God brought mysteries to Paul. But from Paul to Timothy is wisdom. Understanding, sorry. Is understanding. Paul brought the mysteries to Timothy by principle of understanding. But from Timothy to faithful man is wisdom. Timothy transfers the same word from Paul to faithful man, giving wisdom. But from faithful man to others is simply the knowledge. Now look at me. The significance of breaking down mysteries to knowledge is that others can get it. And what is others? Isaac principle. A line of rewarding. Amen. So when God gives you a season to function, importance of your season is how you release yourself to others. If you are not getting blessed, I am blessed by you. Why are you living? Not to eat as many chapatis as possible. It's that you become a blessing to others. Anybody who sacrifices his life for the sake of others, there is a reward in heaven for you. You are an Isaac type. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about the four important principles of Isaac. Four important principles of Isaac in relation to time and season. Four important principles. And I want you to master that greatly. I hope you're following. There are people right now following heavily. And I bless you in Jesus' name. So, what is the underlying thing? I want you to understand the message of today. The message of today is that let your season and your time become relevant by living a lifeless life. A life of what? Reward. We speak about great men like Nelson Mandela. What did they do? They never spent time working on themselves. They poured their lives into what? Into others. You read the throughout the Bible, discover nobody lived his own life in the Bible. They poured their lives into others. I'm asking a question. Where are you poor in your life? That is the meaning of season and time. There are people who are pouring their lives into alcohol until your blood becomes less 
alcohol content becomes more. There are people who live in pouring their lives into wealth. Until they discover, they become insecurity. Comes into your compound in the same wealth. Okay, the more you get blessed, the more you need a serious gift. <laughs> Let's talk. Talk to me right now. The more you buy a vehicle, another one, you build another better house, you need a better game and a better fence. With your crushed that house that says we can go to heaven anytime, you don't need them, even a fence. <laughs> but with your Mabdati house, you need a gate who looks like the fence. <laughs> but when you build your bricks out house, you will need a Mabdati gate. But when you replace it with concrete house, you might need ill gift for my trauma, food and my trauma. The trauma are those. But when you do your corona, corona house with mansions inside, then you might need a serious gift with an electric fence. With a watchman, can be added. Because the more you have wealth, money and riches, the more you become insecure. Mm. And the more your faith is removed from God and put into things. Mm. Some of us say, if we die, let's die. For our lives is part into two. I'm not against people with wealth. But I'm saying you need to live an easier Praise God. Okay. I'm Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So what is the importance of season and time, church? It is to pour your life into others. Is that a praise? That's why I salute men in the uniform. They put their lives at risk for our security. Is that a praise? Is that believing God? Salute doctors who are battling until they die battling with an enemy who is invisible. They are living at Isaac. Please. Can I tell you something? Their reward in heaven is great. Amen. You can have a hundred years to live, but if you have never thought my, when I was going to, go to Tajiri, a rich man who died, and in, he, in his own life, he had never even attended a, a party for a baby. He had never gone to anybody's wedding, anybody's funeral. He forgot that he's going to die, and he wants people to be in his funeral. I can see your faces are turning to become something different. <laughs> It's the name of the living God. Isaka principle is what I'm teaching this morning. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. What has been said? Amen. So this Isaka, and then I talk about the few things. Their ability to discern seasons and what time. What was this guy's dream? They were able to pick the message of God. Are we together? And break down that message into what needs to be done. Look at the statement there. The Bible says something amazing. You see, they were able to tell Israel what they ought to do. Question is, when are you doing? At what time are you doing? The Bible says, Israel generation would give an answer for that. They say, let's not do this now. Let's do this next year. Are we together? Let's not do this this time. Let's do this, and next year we do that. He would organize Israel depending on the seasons so that whatever Israel would do becomes relevant to their time and season. 
Isaac are praised God. I want to pray that may God give you the wisdom of the Isaac. That you know what to do at the right time. Listen to me. It is very, it's a very very hard thing to know what to do at the right time. It's very hard. The son of the man now alone. Now do you have a yellow? I never discovered when you have a lot of money, you are confused on what to do. Now, but when the money is almost finished, you are very clear on what you are supposed to do. <laughs> you need the Israel wisdom so that you can know what to do before you have money. So that when the money comes, you put into use good use. Have you seen a real Munandi who has just gotten enough money from harvesting wheat? And he has five children, two of them at the university, and three of them are nice. But I'm a chafu a mess. That's why I said in one of my meetings, when I want to who carry heads, but inside, you would to make a idea. I mean, there's nothing inside. Number one principle. The purpose, the purpose should precede. The purpose should precede the season. The purposes that God has designed for you should be designed first before the season arrives. Significance of prophecy. Prophecy tells you the purpose before the time comes. A virgin shall give birth to a son. What shall we do to this son? He will be a mighty counselor. He will be a great man. Kingdom shall be in his shoulders. Isaiah is telling us that. So many years before Jesus was born. Why? So that when the time of Messiah comes, you don't miss it. Yes. And Israel would read the scroll, the words of Isaiah, but they never understood it. And Jesus looked at Israel and wept and said, You missed in the days of your visitation. They never heard the Isaac of Israel. If you can discover your purpose in life, come on, every season that shall come shall be put into good use. So don't pray for the season to come. Pray for the discovery of the purpose. The purpose should proceed Glory to the Lord of the When I knew it's my season to speak, I said, God, thank you for training me earlier for this one. Purpose gives you time to train. In fact, the difference or the difference between the purpose and season is called preparation. You prepare for the coming season. They will see a Messiah for us. And so look at Israel. Israel says, come on, don't joke with us. He's the son of the carpenter, the Messiah. Look at the statement they use. He can a ceremony. The Messiah. Of course they brush over and say, you don't, you don't have to be true. But surely he was the Messiah. Until a soldier looked at Jesus at the cross and said, Surely, he was the king of the Jews. He was the son of God. 
Jesus looked at Israel and wept because they missed on the ease and the prison. Listen to me. The most painful moment in life for those who are watching me is when you have lived the fullness of your life and you discover you missed the importance of the same life. If my time to go to heaven comes, listen to me, I am very happy. It's because up to where I am now, I have lived the purposes of God. Bible says in Acts of Apostles 13, 36, that after David he served the purpose of God, he set the principle. He was linked with his fathers. After. The purpose should precede the season. Principle number two. Intent. The intent should precede the content. Intent should precede the content. Intent is intention. The content is the repercussion of the intention. What is the meaning of your season? Will answer what is the impact of your time. What is the meaning of your season? Will answer what is the impact of your time. I remember saying last week, the season should come first before time. I don't, I'm putting another word for this. Look at me, church, and those who are watching. The loneliest life, loneliest, the the loneliest moment in life is when you have arrived at the content and you have missed the intent. What was the intent of God raising Moses? Yes? Is to have a people for himself. God was not saving Israel. He was having a people for himself. But what was the content of God raising Moses to save the children of Israel? So in every life mission, there should be intent. Why are you living? There should be an answer that includes God in that mean, in that in that in that uh, in that in that answer. And why are you existing or living? There should be an answer that pertains your relevance in life. Am I complete? Yes. I repeat again. What was the intent of God raising Moses? To have a people for himself. But what was the content of God raising Moses? To save the children of Israel. I give an example. What was the intent of God raising David? To establish an everlasting kingdom. But what was the content of God raising David? Is to have what? Is to have what? A godly leader. A leader after God. A prototype of leadership in Israel. So, content is about Israel, while intent is about God. That's exactly the same. So, your season should have an intention of God and the content of His people, the Isaac Prince. I'm simply saying, church, for those who are looking at me, when I have known the place of God in my season, 
I will know how to serve God's people in my time. There is Saka prison. And so you find a man whom God has called to be an evangelist, building a very big church. How will you evangelize to the same people every Sunday? Talk to me. Evangelism has to do with what? New people and new environment every, every weekend. Because you are sent out. Then you can find a pastor going mission after mission. What is wrong? There is a confusion between the intent and what? The content. And so what happens? Everywhere you go, Abutakigane, you're not needed. And where you stay, you become monotonous. Because you preach to us, get born again every Sunday. Because you're an evangelist. But we go out there, you preach to everybody, nobody receives you. Because you're a pastor. And so you become irrelevant, but you are in the season. You have missed. The Israel. I give an example. Have you seen a nurse who was supposed to be in the military? The way she frustrates the sick people. A person who is supposed to be in the military is supposed to frustrate the enemy, not the sick people. But there was a confusion by taking the military guy to the, to the nursing career. The season will be worse. Now, what is it in this one? I'm going to get a person to be a man. I'm preaching on the Isaka generation. That's why nowadays a child gets do a last one in high school and then you will be a man. We guess. It is a of consulting. The Isaka principle we get. At the age of class six, I knew that I'm going to be a preacher. I knew. Yeah. Then I said, now that I've known that I'm going to be a preacher, let me find something close to preaching. What is what is close to preaching? Teaching. <laughs> Practically, I became a teacher. And with my good brain, I teach guys in the university. Very easy for me to preach and teach. And I even preach in class and teach in church. <laughs> and nobody questions me what to do because I have mastered the Isaka principle. There's a teaching I taught students sometimes that called the principle of influence for affluence. You are influenced so that you can do what? Instead of influence, you do what? Affluence. You have a factory. So you are influenced to become a toxic thing. To be. It's a caprice. And I'm glad. The world is watching you. Wrong guys at the right season. Wrong season with the right guys. Then the world becomes hell. It's like you have a humble guy and a nagging wife. That man will die after seven months. Can you confirm if your name is Lydia? <laughs> are you still are you still willing we go to number three? Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, you, you may not be willing to. 
you go to number three. <laughs> number three. The covenant should precede the altar. The covenant should precede the altar. Why? The altar is the priest of sacrifice. The place of sacrifice. While the covenant is the place of oath.
grace. And grace is simply service. Love should precede grace. I don't know the cameraman if you can soon be clear. So you can see this. Anytime you want to draw cross. Are you together? Yes. You must think of how the cross fits love. Anytime all of us and young people are very good in drawing this thing. Anytime you want to draw a cross, you must know that the cross should fit love. Because this is where he plays the this is symbolic chemistry. You want to know that every end <laughs> so that the cross is sacrificed. Grace rewarding others. Come down. He celebrates when your child gets sick. That's what your neighbor does. And then Jesus said, Now love. It doesn't get into your head. How can you love the man who is walking against you? You need to bring the cross inside love for you to bring your neighbor inside. And Jesus actually meant that. So the best way to love your neighbor is to sacrifice. For your neighbor. He does something wrong, you do something good. He does something wrong, he hates you, you wait until he gets a child, you turn a shopping to his house. I said, I'm going to go to the house. 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 But I'm going to go to the house. 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 You are loving. The only way to love that nagging boss is to sacrifice for him. When he gives you a statement to do, you will do even more than what he says. And then you keep quiet. You don't show anybody. Mm -hmm. There are two kinds of employees. The one that shows to the boss and the one that sacrifices for the boss. Maradine, right. the one that has been promoted, the one who has been promoted for the boss. He said to me, there is no reward for that person. Mm -hmm. When the boss is removed, he's been going to be removed with the boss. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, question, who will be the next boss? The one that has been what? Sacrificed. Sacrifice. The principle of Isaac. Yeah. When I took my students for a mission, and the dinner students came and looked at the way I sleep, 
mwezi wako chini i don't care tunakula vibiri wote and the dean of students looked at me and said pastor you've been staying like this i said i'm very happy he took me aside and gave me 15000 I called the chairman and said, "Have this fifteen thousand. She will get the money to buy me shoes." They looked at me. Who made the plan at them? He had me five thousand. I took two thousand. I gave to the church pastor because I was sleeping in church pastor's house on the floor, and he didn't, he didn't, we didn't have sugar. We were struggling to get tea. I said, "God has blessed us for a tea." I became the the source of the tea for those few days i was there up to today i'm still invited to the church for anything at the sheria told they love me amen the elders of that community says we want to take a cow and slaughter for this children we didn't show love we show sacrifice amen the sacrifice is done inside love season and time makes sense amen but when sacrifice is done outside love it becomes a mockery to the cross now hold this wisdom is a god had the the new this all along the new this That is why when they would stand up in Israel, even they would listen to them. It's called the Isaac generation. And so we are lacking the Isaac generation. We live like people who are going to guerrilla warfare. Shit us. We don't care anymore. and i want you to pray that prayer god give me a big heart that everybody can fit in if i have 10000 church because i will have 10000 in the church everybody will fit inside my heart is because my heart is too big that i can sacrifice for anybody and feel nothing is because i have a student the second minutes of the isaka please can you tell me i want you to one thing about this message through the week and ask yourself where can i sacrifice for god where can i lay down i was says a good shepherd will lay down his life for the sake of the flock what about the terrible shepherd He will lay like he will lay he will lay down the life of the flock for his sake. That was kondoma jaga mekana mugonjo ana kuchinja kabla hajakufa. Ada mbina gero garuka na sema we chesa tutakuwa tutakuwa utakuwa ni sapa ya Christmas. Jesus was the king of Isaka. Was Isaka Prince Paul? a life of reward that say any time the love becomes greater than the cross seasonal time makes out of sex church and those who are watching may the lord bless you may this blessing be your portion may this blessing never be deleted in your heart and in your mind and as a man of god i declare that our seasonal time are going to be greater for we have learned the wisdom of god and may the lord bless you may the lord heal you may the lord deliver you may this wisdom be your portion and as i bless you you are a blessing to many in jesus great name i pray and i believe